Hey everyone, I have a Cinegears Ghost Eye wireless video handheld real-time 5G scanner and receiver here in my possession. I've had for about six months and to share with you my thoughts uh, about this unit, what I think and whether I recommend it or not. Hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a video production company in Orem, Utah called Doug Johnson Productions. Do all sorts of live events and uh, I have a relationship with Cinegears. Uh, they they provide products for me to review, and uh, I'm not. They do not, do not compensate me in any way for for those reviews, other than providing the equipment to me. And they do not review the content of these reviews before I send them up uh, to YouTube. So they haven't seen this video, and they do not know what I'm going to say. The one request they had of me is that I be completely honest in my review. They didn't want me to to show any sort of favoritism towards them whatsoever. And as I get into the review, that will become fairly apparent. What this is, this is a wireless video monitor that also has a scanner function built into it. So in addition to being act, acting as a, a monitor with a wireless receiver, you can also use it to monitor the different channels that are available. So the Ghost Eye series of wireless uh, video transmitters that, that uh, Cinegears has, that operate on up to 11 channels. And this allows you to see which of those 11 channels is currently occupied, so you can therefore choose a clear channel and give yourself the best chance of having decent range out of, out of your wireless system. Now, the monitor itself does not normally include a transmitter. Uh, they do have a package that does include one, but the default package is basically just the monitor, ha the, some carrying handles, a uh, carrying case, and uh, a DTAP power cable, and that's about it. We have the unit itself and has a couple carrying handles here on the sides. These are completely detachable and they are included with the unit. The handles themselves actually attach to some rosettes that are uh, attached to the quarter 20 mounting points. There are uh, six a quarter 20 mounting points on left and right and then there are five on the bottom. Uh, the unit is made out of metal. I believe it's aluminum. Pretty solid. Uh, the only part that's not is the top portion here which is plastic in, or, in order to allow the radio signals to actually enter the unit since radio does not travel well through metal. Um, we've got the screen itself and then we have some controls over here on the right. So the bottom button is labeled S slash R that's for scanner slash receiver so that one you can use that to toggle between the video receiver mode and the scanning mode. There's a menu button and then the plus and minus button to navigate through the menu and then a function dial which is also used to navigate through the menus as well. Now flip this, or, flip this around the other side. On the back side, we have a couple of speakers. The power switch is located right here. On the side here, there is a jack for a headphone. On the side, there's a jack for a headphone. Then there's an SDI video output and then a Limo connector for power. Now, normally this unit does not actually include a power cable. I just happen to have one that worked and that's how I'm powering it here right now. Uh, in addition to being able to power off of AC, it also has the V-Lock battery mount and that's the primary way that I've actually used this. This is the first time I've actually even plugged in AC power on this. Um, for review purposes. So um, it does run for quite a while on a V-Lock battery. I didn't actually time it, but on the last shoot that I used this for, uh, we had the unit, we had the monitor on for several hours without having to replace the battery. So there's also a USB connection on the back here, presumably for firmware updates, though there's no mention of that in the manual and there's no firmware updates on their website currently. Now flipping this back around, Go ahead, go ahead and put this into scanner mode. So press the SR button and then it'll switch over to scanner mode. Uh, it doesn't switch back and forth between the two particularly quickly. And as you can see from the screen here, I assume you can see that, uh, there we go. Uh, the scanning function isn't particularly fast either. So it takes a couple of seconds to go through all the different 11 channels. But you can very quickly see how much activity there is on the different 11 channels that are in the, in the area. I happen to be transmitting on channel 2 right now. Uh, as you can see that channel 2 is maxed out and apparently there's some spillover into channel 1. And then the other channels are just kind of randomly bouncing up and down a little bit. Uh, these wireless video systems almost uh, across the entire product category operate on 5 gigahertz which also happens to be similar range to Wi-Fi 
And so you'll likely see potential interference from Wi-Fi networks when using these wire systems if your Wi-Fi network does happen to operate in the 5 gigahertz range. But having the scanning function does make it nice that you can, you can see what's going on in your environment so you can choose a clear channel and make sure that you're not going to experience too much interference. Uh, switch it back over to receiver mode. And one thing that you're going to notice here, one of the first annoyances um, that I came up that I, that I noticed was that every time you switch back and forth between scanner function and re receiver function, or if you cycle the power, and when it comes back on, the volume is always turned up halfway. And so you may be able to hear that in the background, a little feedback. But I always, you always have to remember to turn the volume down, otherwise you'll be getting audio from your video source, whether that be a camera or whatever, playing through the speakers on the unit. Uh, presumably, you could get around that by putting a dummy headphone plug in the headphone jack on the back. However, that's just a little bit of an annoyance that, that uh, I didn't particularly like, and the people that I, that I was working with uh, using this weren't fans of that either. We've used this on a movie set, and I've used it on a number of video production uh, locations as well, and having to remember to turn the volume down every time did get a bit annoying. All right, let's go into the menu here and take a look. So the menu here was where you're allowed to, uh, which where you choose the video channel that you're using, the wireless channel. And then you can choose to uh, have include the embedded audio and the output or not. Aux focus. So this is basically your uh, focus peaking feature. You can turn that on or off. Turn that, turn that on right now. There we go. So anything that's in focus appears to be red. There it has a couple of different modes. All right, and then uh, exposure allows you to see ex exposure information. So that's your your zebra function. You got a couple different le uh, sub levels there as well. It has a blue only function, which is useful for checking your color calibration. So if you can send color bars over and put it in blue only mode, make sure that the color decoding is being done properly. Not much of an issue in in the world of digital video, but in the world of analog video, that was very useful. False color is allow allows you to see uh, if your exposure is set up properly, the intensity of the exposure is uh, represented by different colors. I'll turn that back off. All right, and then moving down, safe mark allows you to see what's what's going to be in your final shot after it's cropped. Uh, you can turn the internal fan on and off, which is a good thing because the fan is a little noisier than I, than I than I liked. So it's nice that you have the option of turning that off. And then you can adjust your picture uh, parameters, so chroma, contrast, brightness, and the re do a reset. And then the exit option is there at the bottom. Now one of the the weird things about that is the only way to exit the menu is to scroll all the way down to that exit option. You can't just press the menu button to get back out again. So while you're in the menu, the menu button actually acts as a select or enter button. The unit itself it seems, seems to be pretty well made. And the picture quality on the monitor is not, not bad. Uh, they claim it's an IPS panel. I'm not sure that I really actually believe that. It seems to act a little more like a TN panel. Uh, the viewing angles are okay, but not great. Uh, so as, as soon as you get a little bit off axis, the exposure does tend to, to uh, be thrown off a little bit. And color, saturation, and purity uh, is affected as well. Uh, and even when I look directly straight towards the monitor, the contrast is not particularly high. And the one thing that I can say about this monitor, though, is it is very sharp. The resolution on the screen does appear to be 1920 by 1200, which allows you to have not only a full 1920 by 1080 signal, but also there's room for some indicators there. So you can have an indicator for battery strength for the type of signal that's currently being received, and then a signal strength meter there as well. The sharpness does actually look very very good on this monitor it's just the color purity and the contrast that seem to be a little bit of an issue on on this screen so i wouldn't necessarily use this for judging color when you're using it on your with your camera but you could certainly use it for for checking focus we found that the latency from camera to monitor was quite acceptable uh, they claim it's one millisecond uh, which which is more than more than adequate in order to be able to pull focus. Uh, so we are pretty pleased with that. And that is typical of all of the wireless systems in the Cinegear's Ghost, uh, Ghost Eye range as well. If I was going to summarize the monitor, I'd say it works with quirks. So it, it is a nice piece of equipment. I wish they had spent a little bit more time sort of cleaning up the software a little bit. 
and making it work just a little bit more smoothly. Uh, I do wish the scanning function was quite a bit faster than what it is. Uh, as slow as it is, it would be fairly easy to miss an intermittent signal. Uh, Wi-Fi, for example, tends to be a little bit intermittent. So when you're browsing your phone, it's not constantly transmitting, it's not constantly receiving on Wi-Fi. And so if you've got some interference from Wi-Fi, the, that scanning function might not necessarily pick it up unless it's unless there's constant activity on, on those Wi-Fi channels. So a faster uh, scanning function would have been nice. I don't know what the actual real price is, but if you look at their website, they show at show it as $5,999, which in my opinion is a little bit steep for what this thing is. You know, this seems, it seems to me like this thing should probably be more in the $1,500 to $2,000 range uh, based on the quality of the display and the functions that it offers. But they also, on the site, they also say price upon or on request, customization required. So I can't tell you exactly what a particular package that you might need is going to cost. They do offer some rental options as well. Uh, and that's probably the way that most people are going to go with something like this. Unless you need this constantly, it does, probably doesn't make a lot of sense to necessarily purchase one outright. A lot of the people that would be in the market for this sort of thing are probably renting equipment anyway. And so they can just add this to the bundle of equipment that they're renting. Now, in terms of range, uh, it varies quite a bit. and It varies based on which transmitter you happen to pair it with. I used it with a 200M series transmitter, which in combination with its receiver is rated for 200 meters. In my own testing, that particular combination was able to get 200 meters fairly consistently, 300 meters at times, and 400 meters under absolutely ideal conditions. The range with this monitor as the receiver wasn't anywhere near quite that good. So, uh, 100 meters, yes, it did work. 200 meters, it was definitely spotty. And anything, anything much beyond that with a, with a 200M transmitter uh, was more or less not useful. In terms of use inside of a building, um, because it is 5 gigahertz, like pretty much every other system on the market, these signals do not travel through walls very well. And that's exactly what we saw when we were, t when we were testing. Uh, occasionally, we'd be able to get a fairly reliable signal when passing through one wall. If you had to pass through two walls, the signal would became very much degraded or cut out a lot. And there was a couple times when even, even when this unit was in the same room as the transmitter, we had some signal integrity issues. And I, don't, I can't speak to whether that was necessarily interference or just the nature of having an internal antennas uh, or, or what was going on there, but I wouldn't necessarily count on this any wireless system working 100% of the time. And this one, because of its internal antennas, it seems to be a little bit more prone to interference and dropouts than some of the systems that have the external nice tall antennas, which can do a much better job of p about picking up the signal. So. Uh, it would have been nice if there was an option for external antennas on this unit, but uh, alas, there currently is not. All right, so there it is. The Ghost Eye Wireless Video Handheld Real-Time 5G Scanner and Receiver from Cinegears. Uh, it's a product that I do like. I, I wish the price was a little bit lower, and I wish that the software had been had been given a little more a few a little more time to bake and have received a few more refinements before it actually shipped. Uh, the, the unit does seem to be pretty reliable, aside from the inherent issues with wireless transmission of video. Um, but I didn't have any problems with the actual unit itself. The only issues were just the, the sort that you get from any wireless sort of uh, any, any sort of wireless video system. So, if you guys have any questions about this, please be sure and leave those in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to try and answer. Uh, I, if you have any interest in video production related topics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I try to release videos about once a week, although this lately I've had many other things going on, so I haven't been able to keep up that schedule. I do intend to return to that schedule as soon as I can. But uh, yeah, so I do I cover all sorts of topics related to video production, particularly, particularly with live video production, but other, uh, other types are on the table as well. If you're running your own video production company, please also take a look at a website that I've created called crewaxis.com, URL down below. It's there to help you manage every aspect of your video production business, from scheduling the events to communicating with your crew to keeping track of your equipment and finances. And lately, I've even added features to help you interact with your clients as well to make sure that you're able to get all the information that you need from your clients before you show up on the day of an event and you don't have any surprises. There you go. Thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.